All right. It, I'm hoping we are live right now. Um, if we are live, um, good to go. I'm um, wondering who's seeing this. Um, hopefully the thousands and thousands of people that are we're broadcasting to. Um, welcome to the third night of the SB Chat Phys Ed Summit. Um, we hope you are enjoying the sessions. This is our third night of sessions. Um, my name is William Potter, and I will be moderating this evening. I am here to um, moderate for the fantastic Jason Steele. He's from no, uh, North Dakota. Um, we want to thank the Phys Edagogy crew for creating the Phys Ed Summit and helping uh, SB Chat along the way. We are using a lot of technology tonight, so during the session, if something goes wrong, you'll find um, us scrambling around, but we'll get you up as soon as possible. Um, we're trying some new things out. Uh, we're using YouTube Live. Um, you'll find a chat feature next to YouTube Live on the right-hand side, and if you have any questions or comments, um, please use that chat feature, and um, I will pass those questions along to Jason at the end. In the event that the technology fails, uh, we'll use the chat feature to update you and update the SP Chat website as quickly as we can. If you're using social media, we would love for you to use two hash chat, the two hash tags, ESPE Chat and Phys Ed Summit, for your posts. So once again, this is Jason Steele. He comes to us all the way from North Dakota, Minot, North Dakota. This is his 11th year teaching kindergarten to fifth grade physical education. This is his first time presenter, so be gentle. He is currently the North Dakota SHAPE uh, board member. Uh, his Twitter handle is at PerkettPE, and he likes to do the hashtag or has the hashtag NDPEChat. He is the NDPE chat moderator. Uh, hopefully, you guys can join him on one of his NDPE chats. Um, but right now, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Jason. All set? I am ready. All, All right. right. Well, thank you, Will. Um, the fantastic William Potter uh, was able to, uh, after the third time, finally pronounce Minot, which was cool. Uh, and for those of you who are watching, uh, I know Will said he was hoping that thousands and thousands were were watching. I am really kind of not hoping that thousands and thousands. So the four of you who are watching, I think that's probably good uh, for a first time presenter. But uh, you may know me already personally, and you may have noticed that the the beard is gone. I look about ten years younger. I'm just approaching my thirties now. Uh, <laughs> And uh, I just got off the ice from hockey practice, which is why I'm wearing the hat. But I did go with a little North Dakota pride uh, there for you. Um, and like Will said, I'm I'm a first time presenter. This is my 11th year teaching physical education, and I'm excited to be here. And hopefully, I can give you a little something that you can take back to your class and use. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and and get to the presentation here. Hopefully you guys can see this. So I, it feels like everybody's laughing now when they see this picture uh, of me <laughs> with my beard. And uh, that's about a year's growth right there. Um, and that is my wife, Allison. And she, in that picture, is actually pleading begging and pleading to the twitter world and facebook world uh, for me to shave my beard uh, i told her that i would shave it if i got like 2500 followers or 5000 retweets and she didn't quite make it i think it only got about 100 100 retweets so i must not be as twitter famous as i had hoped to be but uh, so a little bit about me i am a K through five elementary PE teacher and a coach. I coach uh, JV baseball and girls varsity hockey. So if you're wondering, there is a special place for me in heaven because of that. Uh, I'm in my 11th year at Perkett Elementary in Minot. I absolutely love Perkett and the students, the staff, the parents. Uh, it's a fantastic school and and for the Minot Public Schools District. Uh, I, 
I really can picture myself being a lifer at Perkip. Uh, we were fortunate enough recently to have a very big addition put onto our school where we added classrooms and office space and a very big gym. Uh, my office is very nice and I have a lot of storage. And so I am, I am uh, thankful to have that. Uh, like I said, my wife, Allison, is a family and consumer sciences teacher at Central here in Minot. Uh, that is a ninth and 10th grade school. We have two children. Grayson, our son, is eight, and he actually is at Perkett with me in the second grade. Jersey is our daughter. She's five and just finishing up preschool this year. I'm a current ND Shape board member. I was just voted onto that, so I'm excited uh, to be a part of that and, and try to help out any way I can. I graduated from Minot State University in 2007, and I am currently enrolled at Jamestown University for my master's of education, which I will begin in June. And like Will said, uh, if you want to, I, I gave a little shameless plug here at the end for my Twitter handle, which is at Perkett PE, if you don't already follow. So what we're going to talk about today, uh, I've given you a little rundown of what I'm going to blab about, but uh, it's how I choose to teach and why and, and what inspires my lessons. Uh, I'm going to talk about a few things that is uh, that are new at Perkett this year. Um, I was lucky enough with our addition at Perkett to get a projector and a screen, and so I'm going to share a few cool projector video ideas and a variety of some of the videos that I showed during my class activities. I I use that projector on a daily basis. I threw in some tag games. I called it Tag Game Mania, so I, I'm going to share a few of my students' favorite tag games and my own that we do and that we use, uh, and most of them hopefully with a little humorous spin. I'm going to share some fun and cooperative warm-up and fitness activities, some fun visuals that I use. I like to add color and pictures and and anything visually appealing to the students uh, in the gym. So I'm going to share some of those. Some Star Wars stuff, because I'm a, a little bit of a Star Wars nerd. Um, I have a new thing that we use called the What Are We Doing Today board, which I will share some pictures of. I've got some bonus material. And then if you're still with us at the end, a little wrap-up and a thank you. Uh, before we get going, I... I Really just like to say thank you to to Matt uh, from ESPE Chat for having me. Um, I, I do have a little bit of a bone to pick with him if he's listening uh, in that he made me follow Andy and Amanda from Sunday and Rich and Will from last night. That's a tough, <laughs> a tough crowd to follow. Um, and so hopefully I can give you a little bit of information and hopefully it's on the same same wavelength as as what they're on there are are bar none they're they're at the top of their game for sure so hopefully i can add a little bit to that making the leap from good to great um is is something that i would like to do and and like to help out uh the best that i can to make you make that leap uh the best thing about good teachers is that they're always striving to be great teachers uh, right now, if you if you are listening, if if you're here on a Tuesday night, listen listening to a guy from from North Dakota uh, talk about what he does in his physical education class, you are taking the time out to do professional development by yourself um, outside of school. You're making an effort to make your classroom a better place. You are a good teacher, um, and and hopefully will become a great teacher. And so I'm, I'm hoping tonight to bridge that gap to, to take you from good to great. My goal tonight, I want to inspire you to take one or more activities or ideas back to your classroom. 
if I can if I can help you um, take make your classroom better, then I've done my job. Uh, some of the things that you will see tonight are my own ideas. Some are inspired from the amazing Twitter community. Uh, some are inspired from people around me that I that I've that I'm close with, and some are activities that are old but have a new hip spin to them. And so, uh, like I said, my goal is is to hopefully inspire one or more activity idea for you to bring to your classroom. So how I choose to teach, um, I anytime I'm going to do a new activity, unit, um, game, whatever the case may be, uh, I ask myself these questions, or I ask myself these these questions. What is new or innovative, and can I do it in my classroom? And that's not to say that old school ideas are not still valid. They are. Um, there are some activities that physical education teachers have been using for years. Um, there are some that we should not be using anymore. Uh, but I like the new ideas. I like innovative ideas. I like being able to bring ac ideas or activities into my gym, into my classroom that I think students will enjoy, um, that they are into. You know, one example that, that comes to mind is fidget spinners. There's been an amazing, um, wave of ideas that people have have come forward with with fidget spinners and that's just students are into it they bring them into their classroom they find a cool way to use them um, and just to gain attention of their students so um, that's one question that I ask myself before I begin a unit or activity another one is would it be relevant relevant to my students um, I'm not going to teach offense and defensive strategies or or the um, zone defense of for basketball to kindergartners so I'm going to make sure that that it's relevant to the group that I'm teaching and, and to my students um, and, and I want the lesson to be memorable uh, what am I going to do how am I going to teach this lesson so that it's memorable for the students how am I going to grab their attention can I add in some humor to get and keep my students' attention. Um, I think we've all been at that point where you know that you've got a, a good hook, where you can get them in, you've got a good anticipatory set where you can gain their attention. Um, and uh, maybe it's just me, maybe there are other people out there who are listening that, that have had this, but sometimes you can go too far with the amount of humor that you use and all of a sudden now you've lost all the attention of your students they're they're going bonkers because they're laughing or having so much fun so um, there there is too much I think but I like to add humor into my lessons I think it helps uh, it be memorable for the students my lessons and my unit plans are always changing sometimes from class to class and I think this is similar to most people uh, the way that they teach there will be times where I'll start a new activity or a lesson and I'll find a different or a better way to do that halfway through the lesson, and so I'll try it in the next class, or or I'll try it the next day. And so, um, always changing from from um, class to class. What can I add to a lesson or unit plan to make it more entertaining, relevant, memorable? Or funny can I add something humorous like a short uh, gif or a video or can I add pictures to to the activities to make them uh, more appealing to the students um, and then I think we'll will like this one in that can I integrate other subjects into the lesson uh, can I make it cross-curricular um, I think that that if we're going to advocate for ourselves as physical education teachers, which has been a huge issue, um, we need to be able to make sure that our lessons and our activities 
and what we teach and what we do is is valid and and we have to justify how we're doing it and why we're doing it and i think cross-curricular activities are is an amazing way to do that um and it's it's just going to help your entire student body out so we're going to get rolling here with some activities some more appealing things rather than me just blabbing um hopefully i drug that out long enough where we're not going to be done in 25 minutes uh but what's new at perkett this year uh I am a Go Noodle ambassador, and so um, I will use that weekly. Um, I'll, there are some times where I'll go a couple weeks without using it, but I, I like to add it into my lessons and my activities uh, for warm-ups, for fitness activities. There are so many activities that you can use Go Noodle for um, where you can go into Go Noodle, you can search. Uh, for anything that you want to teach and there are short little videos um, if you haven't used it it's a great resource to add into into your daily lessons uh, for example one activity that we did for Halloween there was a bones activity where they they did a dance but they also le learned the some of the bones in the body um, which was really neat to see we got a new rock climbing wall uh, we did some some fundraising for that. It is 40 feet total in length and eight feet tall. Uh, it's 20 feet by 20 feet. If you look at the picture, it's in the corner. Uh, so it's 20 feet into the corner and then 20 feet into the corner. Uh, it's been an amazing resource to have and it, it would not have happened if I wouldn't have asked. I asked if we could fundraise for it. Uh, I brought the idea up. And currently, if I'm not mistaken, I am the only one in Minot Public Schools with a rock climbing wall. Uh, and that's about 12 schools, 11 to 12 schools, I believe, that are in Minot Public Schools, elementary schools. Uh, and then we have three middle schools and two high schools. And um, I believe that, that I am the only one. I could be wrong. And, and hopefully I don't get a whole bunch of messages and, and texts because of this but um it's been an amazing resource and and if you have the chance to get one or to fundraise for one um it can only help your classroom uh we added a perkett pe champions trophy um and i've got to thank david flores for that his twitter handle is at the coach flores um he had some trophies that he used for for different activities and i thought you know what i've got some old basketballs i've got an old cone and so I just put it together. I glued it on there and I painted it with gold spray paint in my garage, brought it to school and the kids went nuts for it. Um, I don't know if you can see the picture. It's, it's actually pretty big. It's about three feet tall. Uh, it's this big giant golden trophy that we use and, and we call it the Perkett PE Champ Champions Trophy. And that's for the top class, the top phys ed class of the month. Um, I, I give it to the class that behaves the best, works the hardest, is always active, um, uh, and and it's tough. Uh, one one thing that I think I might change with that in the future is uh, I have fifteen classes, different classes that I teach, and one trophy, and I only give it out once a month. So one of the ideas I had is to maybe do it weekly. Uh, one idea I had was to maybe make a smaller one and do that for a K2 trophy and then have a bigger one for a 3-5 trophy. So that's one cool idea that I've gotten from Twitter that, that I really enjoy using and that students really enjoy as well. Uh, we've got some new pedal cars. I actually got this idea off of Twitter as well. And um, they, again, this is another activity that or a piece of equipment that I got just by simply just by asking. I I asked PTA for four of them and was given the money for those. And we use them about four or five times a year in different activities. We're able to do some Mario Kart activities. Um, and so now this video I'm going to show you right here, the hallway shenanigans video is, is me. I, for those of you who are watching and did see the beginning when I had my baby face, this is a little bit earlier 
when I had had a bearded face. Um, but I like to kind of think outside the box. I like I like to. I'm a bit of an instigator uh, when it comes to teaching. I like to to. Um, I, I like to get people's attention and and show students that it's okay to have fun and be yourself as long as you're doing it in in an appropriate manner. But uh, the day that we got these Berg pedal cars, I actually climbed on and, and rode them through the school uh, and, and made a little bit of a ruckus. Nobody seemed to really mind but because they thought they were cool. But uh, So hopefully this works. This will be the first video that I'll show on here, and hopefully this one works. Uh, it's going to bring you to my Twitter account uh whoops we'll try that again so that'll bring you to the twitter account and then this is me riding them through the hallways and one of the fifth grade teachers is filming uh so just uh just showed them off a little bit their kids running out of the, their rooms and hopefully i didn't bug any kids while they were taking tests or anything teachers didn't seem to mind so uh, that's one way that, uh, that we've added a little bit of movement in a different way is, is through those, those pedal cars. So, um, this is one way that we use them in the classroom. This is called the Daytona 500. Uh, this is about a minute and a half long. It's going to take you to my, my Twitter page as well. Um, but this is how we use them in the classroom. And I set up a little racetrack. In the middle is a, is a pit area um, that you will see here in a second. One student jumps on in, in their pit area. When they finish a lap, you can see the boy there. He's switching the lap uh, to the next lap. And I say the team with the most laps at the end of the time that we're doing it, or the first team to 21 laps is the winning team. Uh, but you have to be active in the middle. And so you'll see some of them doing – their movements pretty well. Um, when you get over here, I believe the video comes right now. Those are the pit crew exercises that we do. So they're able to choose one of those exercises while they're in the pit area uh, so that they can uh, stay active when they're not on, on the pedal cars themselves. And so uh, they rip around on them pretty fast, pretty good. I, you know, obviously you have to talk about safety and, and, and that, matter but it is a very good leg workout especially uh when you're an adult male trying to ride them around you get a little bit of a hip and leg workout so uh those are the berg pedal cars um i mentioned before that that i was able to get a projector and a screen at perkett and so i'm gonna advocate to every phi ed teacher to ask for one if you don't have one yet, please ask for one. There are so many activities that you can do. Uh, there are so many different ways that you can use them. And, and you might not be in a position where you can have one or you're able to get one. And, and that's totally fine. Um, but if you have the room, if you have the means to ask, please do it. And, and I put up there, what are they going to say? Okay, are, are you just going to be told no? Um, if so, oh, oh, well, you ask again the next year. Um, it adds so much more than you think to your daily lessons. Uh, I'm going to show you a couple activities that, that I use them in. Um, and, and then we'll move on. This is a Sonic the Pinhog activity. Um, and, and why I put this one on there is, because during my activities, like I said before, I like to add a little bit to each activity. How am I going to make it more fun? We do an activity called Sonic the Pinhog. And through this activity, uh, I've just played Sonic the Hedgehog theme song um, while we were playing the game. And so I will listen in to that one.
so so there you can see um, that's just a super easy way of adding a little bit to your classroom while using the projector that was just as simple as going on YouTube finding the the Sonic the Hedgehog theme song and playing it during our activity of Sonic the Pinhog. Um, this one here is a Star Wars overhand throwing activity. This is actually a keynote, um, and you've probably seen activities similar to this. Uh, but this is a activity where students will throw uh, the small gator balls. They're in teams. They throw them at the Star Wars bad guy. So that, that was uh, just another different way to add a little bit of, of uh, flair, I guess you could call it, to your, to your activities. Um, you know, there's so many different ways that you can work on overhand throwing and throwing to moving targets or stationary targets. But adding a screen in where they're throwing at big, giant Star Wars bad guys is just super appealing to me not only because i think it's it's cool because i didn't ever get a chance to do that when i was in elementary school uh but um but because why not i mean they, there's so many so many ways to add some flair and and that was one way that i was able to do it um so we're gonna move on um, this is one other way that I, I use the screen um, in my class, and it's this is a welcome to PE intro video. I was able to get this idea from Twitter uh, where teachers were using iMovie uh, to demonstrate rules or, or expectations for activities. And I thought, you know what, what, what if I made like a, an intro video for physical education class? Um, it was extremely easy. Anyone can do this. I am a little bit of a techie, but I fall short to most people when it comes to technology. If I'm able to do this, most people are able to do this. Um, and and w the way that I use this is I show this on the first day of physical education class for each class. So I go through rules, procedures, expectations, um, and then I will show this video. And so hopefully this works for you. So that's that's one way uh, that I was able to use the screen. Uh, we turned off all the lights. We showed that up on the screen. Um, super incredible way to gain a student's attention. My fifth graders thought it was cool. My kindergartners, the look on their face was incredible. Like, whoa, that's the stuff we're doing in here. What is going on? Who is this bearded guy? Um, Super cool, super fun way to, to add a little flair and excitement uh, into your classroom. Uh, all right. Again, like I said before, I'm about as technical as I can be. 
I'm going to try to get out of here. We'll do this. Um, and this is another way, uh, like I said before, that I saw on Twitter they were using the screen, they were using iMovie uh, to make videos where they're trying to gain students' attention. They're using them as an anticipatory set. They're using them as, um, as a way to gain students' attention to give them rules, expectations for activities. And so this is one that I put together that I'm going to use for an activity called Pirates of the Caribbean Tag. Um, and so I will show you that one as well. And again, that's that's one way where I am going to try to use the screen, try to use the video that I made uh, through iMovie that I'm going to show before we do that activity to just try to use it as an anticipatory set. Maybe add a little humor, uh, get them excited about the activity uh, so that we can move on. Uh, I put these in there uh, for most people who want to go back and, and watch the presentation and look. Um, these are some things that we, some videos that I use in class and game activities um, as well. Um, I will show a couple of them just because I think they're funny. Uh, if you've ever got your students or you've ever feeling like you are just sluggish and your kids aren't moving and, and it's just one of those full moon weather is changing days, um, I like to show this video. This is, you can find on YouTube as well. It's called The Polar Bear. Uh, going to work on Monday. And I, I've got to be honest, I have no idea what that says at the end of that. So hopefully it doesn't swear uh, or, you know, talk bad about anything. But um, I basically show that and it always gets a few laughs. And then it, it just seems like amazingly after you show that, all of a sudden now students are excited and they're moving. Um, so just using a little bit of humor, trying to, trying to get them loose and, and ready for class. Uh, when we do our basketball unit, I will show this video. Uh, my students, maybe yours too, whenever we're working on jump shots or anything, any chance that they can, they love to take full or half court shots. And I just say, you know, it's not safe. Um, you know, we're not going to do that. There's too many students in here for our space. Um, and then I'll show them this video and tell them why not. In this video, what you'll see is you'll see a, a basketball game being played and someone was able to get a video of there's a boy that runs across the court. Uh, when he gets to the other end of the court, he he gets a little surprise from the full court shot that is thrown. So I will show you that one. <laughs> and it it makes me chuckle. I think sometimes if it makes me chuckle, uh, the students are going to think it's funny. Uh, of course, there are those times where I think things are funny and they don't because you know, they're elementary students and they, they're, they're pretty cool. So, um, but I always show that during the basketball activities that we're doing. And then there are no full court or half court shots because of that. Um, I, I would show you this, but all it is, is this, the Vikings fight song. Uh, we play an activity called smelly Packer tag. 
uh, which is just a little bit of a rendition from Smelly Skunk Tag. Uh, but I am from North Dakota, and so I am a Vikings fan. And um, because I'm a Vikings fan, uh, the Vikings and the Packers have a bit of a, a rivalry. Um, and I play the Skull Vikings official fight song while we play Smelly Packer Tag. And it, it's just a fun activity and a fun way to, to add some flair again, like I said, into your, into your classroom. Uh, the next things I'm going to talk about are a, se or a section in here called Tag Game Mania. Um, I use tag games for, for warm-ups for fitness activities um, to cover chasing and fleeing standards. Um, I will use them uh, as game activities. Uh, I think they hold an important role in what we do as elementary physical education teachers. Uh, you literally can use the same tag game but call it something different all the time and students uh, more often than not don't pick up on it. Uh, but these are some of my favorites, some of my students' favorites uh, that we do. Um, these are simple tag games with very little equipment. Uh, everyone from my kindergartners to my fifth graders enjoy these. Um, and so the first one is toilet tag, which many of you have seen before. Um, it's a simple tag game that many teachers have played, but how, when, when I wanted to teach it, I said, how can I make it my own? So I have scooter paddles that are wooden and then they have a rubber end. And the way that they're folded over, they have the rounded end that goes on the the floor so they can propel themselves on the scooters. But I found that if you can flip them over, you can use them. They look like plungers. And so students were like, what are we, why are we using plungers to move? And so we added it into our tag game that the students who are it will carry a plunger. Um, and the way that I had seen this played before was that students who were tagged would take a knee with their arm out. Other students would sit on their laps and flush the toilet, which I thought uh, was funny, but um, students, if you could imagine, would, would end up taking that a little too far. So um, what we do now is we just have them hold their arm out, um, and the incredible Drano uh, <laughs> will wear a cape, and, and he's the incredible Drano, or she's the incredible Drano, and they run around, and they will flush the students' arms when their arms are flushed, they will spin around uh, three to five times on the gym floor, which is an amazing activity. Uh, and they will all do that because I don't know about you, um, and I have this written on here, but do your students love spinning circles on the floor too? It is incredible. When I'm giving instructions, I've got 24 students who are paying attention, and I have their attention, and I have two students who are spinning circles on the floor. Um, so this is a fun way to just say, you know what, now's your opportunity to spin circles, here you go. Um, so that's toilet tag. The next one I have for you, like I, I talked a little bit about before, was Smelly Packer Tag. Uh, it's a Vikings fan's favorite. I have friends who are Packer fans and they don't think it's as funny as I do. Um, basically we start out by telling the students who are Packers fans, it's okay to be a Packers fan. And the reason we play it is because I am a Vikings fan. And I have on here in the parentheses, yes, unfortunately. However, we are seven and two. Um, so I, I might have to take that out. Um, but the way that this is played is that two smelly Packers will wear green vests. Uh, they are it. If a student is tagged, they need to take a knee. They plug their nose with one hand and hold their other hand up in the air. And then any student who has not been tagged can help them back in the game by giving them a high five. Uh, what I would like to do is find a Vikings helmet of some kind. Um, and then kind of like in Toilet Tag where we had the Incredible Drano, we could have the Incredible Viking who is the almighty savior and he can come by and, and help people back in. Uh, and then, like I mentioned before, we listen to the Vikings fight song as we play that. So that is Smelly Packer Tag. Chicken Tacos. Now, I have to say this is not 
my tag game. I I saw this on Twitter and instantly knew that I could do this because I have two rubber chickens uh, that I that I'm able to use when we play this. But the, if you haven't seen this, um, it's a continuous tag game where the taggers are constantly changing. So there's no out. Nobody's out ever. Um, it's just continuous. And uh, the way that it works is um, you, you will hold a poly spot and you will fold it over a rubber chicken. Uh, and then that person is the chicken taco tagger. And they run and, and try to tag other students. And when they're tagged, uh, they drop the chicken taco on the floor. The person they tagged then has to pick it up. And now they are the chicken taco tagger. So uh, really cool activity. Um, it's really funny to see the, the poly spot folded over with the chicken in it. Uh, and it really does look like a chicken taco. So there really is no anticipatory set needed. They literally get into it from the moment you start talking about it. They, you gain their attention by saying, hey, we're playing chicken tacos or chicken taco tag. And then all of a sudden you have their attention. This is an activity that I actually uh, was able to, to see when I was student teaching, uh, but have changed it just a little bit. Uh, it is called Ninja Turtle Tag. In a Ninja Turtle Tag, we, we pick four students to be the Ninja Turtles. They're Michelangelo, Leonardo, Raphael, and Donatello. So I'm, I'm lucky enough to have those color vests, and so I will put those color vests. Or if you don't have those vests, you could just use green vests for the turtles. Um, and then in the middle of my gym, I have a circle, a taped circle that we call the sewer. Only the Ninja Turtles are allowed in there. One to two students are selected to be the shredder. Uh, and I have these blue giant foam hands, or you can have them wear blue vests or however you would want to identify them. If a student is tagged by the shredder, a Ninja Turtle then has to come out of the sewer where they are safe to help that student. And when they are tagged, they have to lay down on their back with their hands and feet in the air and they have to yell, Calabunga dude, until a Ninja Turtle helps them. Recently, we played a game called Dead Ants. This is a, a tremendous, fast paced, and, and greatly cooperative tag game. If, if there is a more cooperative tag game than this, I would like to see it. Um, this is a game where I have two foam giant feet. Uh, the two students who are it have those, and they are the ant squashers. They use them to tag the other students. If they're tagged, they become a dead ant, and they lay down on their, their back again with their hands and feet in the air, and it takes four students to help a dead ant back to safety. Each student grabs an arm or a leg, they pick them up and we, we talk about carrying them gently and being careful and setting them down gently and they carry them to a safe area where then that dead ant is able to, to get back into the game. So that's dead ants. So I've got some fun and cooperative warm up and fitness activities that I do. Uh, some of these are, are my own. Some I have seen from Twitter and made my own. Some are not mine at all. And I just knew that I had to do it. Um, I will show a couple of them. One that, that got a lot of attention on Twitter that people really enjoyed was um, called Flip Flop. And this, when I click on this, it's going to bring us to Twitter. Um, Flip Flop was just a very fast warm up activity where the students. Uh, jump over a student and then go back under and it's continuous. So you will see that. So again, that's, that is flip-flop. Um, 
you can go for as long as you want and you change partners. Uh, it's a really, really fun way to get students moving. Um, this one is called Capture the Cone. This is, this got a lot of attention also on Twitter. I did not come up with this. Um, I saw other teachers sharing this on Twitter and, and decided to do mine this way, but it's, it's a really cool activity that students really enjoy. Ears. Nose, ears, knees, toes, hips, forehead, chin, mouth, ears, cone. So as you can tell, um, there's not much more to say about that activity. You can see on the picture right now the enthusiasm that they had, the excitement that they had for this. You can have them switch partners. Um, and, and they have a lot of fun with that. These are some of the visuals that I like to use. Uh, I like to add color. I like to add pictures. I like to add appealing visuals so that students, uh, have more fun with the activities. Uh, in the, in the far left here, these are, um, underhand toss targets where I actually got this activity off of Twitter as well. Um, and they toss a beanbag or whatever you have towards towards the objects and then they get points um really simple activity uh the one on the far right is called duck hunt and in duck hunt they are working on overhand throwing skills to a stationary target where they are trying to hit the ducks if they hit the duck they're able to take the duck back to their team um and it's it's a back and forth overhand throwing activity the bottom one is an activity that we do called superhero fitness and in superhero fitness we actually have five superheroes that have superhero vests uh each superhero has a different color uh superman would have blue elastigirl would have red and so on and then if a student is tagged by that superhero they go to this sign which i have posted on the on the wall and then they do the exercise with that that superhero so those are some fun visuals that I that I'm able to use and that students really enjoy. Uh, I like to teach physical literacy. Um, if you guys know Amanda Stanek, uh, she has quote been quoted as saying that visual physical literacy is a journey, not a destination. I like to create uh, physical literacy using visual word walls, um, and I I know that this is not how most people will do this, but it is how a, a different way to to add some appeal um, to your gym wall. Uh, another thing that this does is if your administrator walks through and sees that you have word walls up where you have uh, these posted, um, you might get a pat on the back. It's pretty cool uh, to do a volleyball unit or a baseball unit um, and have the pictures and the vocabulary used for that activity. Um, so I will post the terms and vocabulary used during the class or lessons to establish a base of why physical literacy is important in your life. Um, and as you can see in the bottom left, students enjoy looking at them. They, they, there are some times where I will teach an activity and I will use terms and then they'll walk over and they'll look and see what that is actually. Um, and so it's pretty cool to see students use those. So I have to thank... Uh, Kevin Tiller and give a huge shout out to him. Um, his Twitter handle is at phys ed review. If you don't follow Kevin, you need to, um, he is a huge star Wars buff and I am a huge star Wars nerd as well. And so these are some things that I've taken from him or helped, um, or made my own, um, where you add star Wars and pictures into an activity to make it more appealing. The bottom one is called star Wars AMRAP. If you don't know what AMRAP is, that is, as many rounds as possible, uh, which is a, a super cool fitness activity. Um, and then the bottom right, this one right here, is a self-assessment where students will tap either Master Jedi, Developing Jedi, or Beginning Jedi um, on how they did for the day. So this is what our, our What Are We Doing Today board. I will post, uh, I'm sorry about the picture, it's, it didn't come out as 
as good as I wanted. But I post all my da daily visual posters and um, in the three categories that you can see that on there, warm-up and fitness activities, a lesson focus of what we're doing for the day, and then game activity signs. So when students come in, they can see that right away, that that's what we're doing for the day, that's what we're doing for the week, which is a cool, cool way to display that. So we're getting down to the end, um, and if I haven't made you laugh, smile, or grin yet, hopefully um, I can make you do that now. Um, and hopefully you can maybe add this into your classroom. I actually have students who will ask um, when Ford will come back. Uh, this is Ford. He is my dog. And he is now Perkett famous. Uh, and so what I do is I, I use chatter picks to give short little messages and I will play them up on my screen uh, for the students. So this is a couple of those. Yeah, hey everybody, this is Mr. Steele's dog. My name is Ford, and I'm here to remind you, make sure that you bring your tennis shoes to physical education class every day. That way, Mr. Steele doesn't have to bark at you to stay safe. So that's... So that's the first one, and then I was able to make another one and use this one uh, during our Halloween activities. Hey, everybody. Hi, this is Mr. Steele's dog again, Ford, coming at you live from his backyard where I live. I'm just here to remind you that over Halloween, if you decide to go out for a walk and go trick-or-treating, to stay safe. And take it easy on the candy. If you eat too much, you might end up getting a cavity or two in your old canines. So uh, it's funny, actually, that students will actually pick up on the little hidden jokes that are in each one of those. And, and they really have a fun time uh, with those. Oops. And my technology. Uh, savvy coming out here uh i got to give a shout out to to my buddy fred nelson uh he is uh at south prairie pe his, his twitter handle is at south prairie pe uh, i got to give a shout out to him for his his simpsons amrap uh he was um a good friend of mine is a good friend of mine uh we coached baseball together and always kind of bouncing ideas off of each other uh, and so he saw my my Star Wars AMRAP that I do and he thought you know what that's that's super cool I, I tried that students really enjoyed it uh, What if we did other ones like the Simpsons or anything where students are gonna know what they are and, and We can get some movement out of it. So he came up with the Simpsons AMRAP idea um, and so I, I had to copy him um, and and do that so that's a cool cool activity and then this one is Tom the Tattle Turkey. I actually use this quite often uh, at the beginning of the year until students realize that I'm really not into tattling. I don't like to listen to it. I feel rude sometimes when I don't listen to it and I just point over at Tom. Uh, but you know that uh, very often they'll come up to you and you can just tell by the tone in their voice that they're about to tattle on someone. And so I will just point over to Tom the Tattle Turkey uh, and I just tell them that he likes to listen to tattling and I don't. And it's really funny that <laughs> to see their reaction, sometimes they will actually go over and, and tell Tom the Tattle Turkey on the wall what happened. Sometimes they'll just forget about it and go, okay, I get what you're doing. Um, so that's a cool activity to have on your wall. Um, I've got to say thank you to all of these people, and I know that I'm probably missing some thank yous on here. Uh, but first and foremost, I got to thank Matt um, from ESPE Chat uh, for giving me the opportunity to do this presentation. Uh, I got to thank the ESPE Chat team, uh, Megan Tabak, who you will see tomorrow night. Uh, I've got to thank Pete from Captain Pete's PE. I get a lot of activity ideas from him. Uh, Will Potter, my moderator, awesome dude. If you didn't watch his his presentation last night, you need to go back and watch that. K 
Kevin Tiller, obviously, with the Star Wars activities that I do. Uh, David Flores uh, with my trophy idea. My Minot Phys Ed community. Um, I have to thank the GIF staff at Twitter. You guys got to keep those rolling. I love to tweet with GIFs. I think it adds appeal to it, and it makes me chuckle and laugh. Uh, I have to thank my wife and kids. They are my backbone. They are my entire life. Uh, they're the reason why I love doing what I do and I'm able to do what I do uh, through education. Um, and I, I have to thank my principal, Renee, the staff at my school and all my students who put up with my shenanigans uh, on a daily basis. Uh, you can contact me if you have any questions. Uh, again, a little shameless plug at Perkit PE if you don't already follow me. Um, and then my email is on there, jason.steel at minot dot k12 dot nd dot us so um that is a way to get a hold of me if you have any questions or you want to collaborate on an activity i'm always open for that um and so i guess now we come over to our question part if if people are still listening <laughs> um or have any questions so Here's Will again and, and myself. We, yeah, we do. We have a couple of questions. First, uh, somebody asked if we're going to work backwards. So um, Chatterpix, um, is it free and is it easy to use? It is, it is completely free. Uh, it's an app that I use on my phone, and then I'm able to tweet from that. It's super easy to use. Uh, you just you take whatever picture you want. Um, and then you're able to just draw a line to use for the mouth and you record the whatever you want uh, that picture to say. And then you're able to add little little uh, things to it, like hats and ties like that my dog Ford was wearing. So Yes, Ford, Ford rocks, apparently. Yeah, he definitely, does. He definitely is. rocks. Um, some questions were about your, your visuals and, uh, you had a turkeys with numbers on them. Uh, where did those turkeys with numbers come from? Yep. So a lot of times when I do my visuals, I will go on, uh, Google or someplace and I will, I will get, uh, PNGs, um, and then print them off. I'm lucky enough at my school to have color printer. Uh, nobody asks too many questions when I'm, when I'm printing with too much color. So a lot of those are, pictures and things that I'll, I'll get off of Google. Uh, do you rotate your word wall um, based on what unit you're doing or is it up all year, year long? No, uh, I do rotate it. There, I have a, an area in the gym where I will um, just post the activity that we're doing. And I don't do them with every activity. Uh, I would like to. I think it would be great, uh, but I would be at the school 24-7 hanging up uh, word walls. So, um, mostly bigger units, um, or units that we, we will spend more time on. So, uh, how long do your intro trailers and intro videos take to make? So the first one took me a little bit longer because the hardest part was actually getting all the pictures that I wanted on there. Uh, with, with iMovie, it's super easy to, uh, they're already set up for you. You, you type in what you want it to say, the video is already set up. You just have to add your pictures in there. Um, so depending on how long it takes you to get the pictures and, and how long it takes you to decide what you want to say, um, I mean, really, you could probably rack one out in under a half hour if, if you had all the pictures. It's a pretty cool, pretty cool resource to have. Uh, the next question is about your projector. Okay. Um, when you put your projector up, is it mounted? Did you have it professionally mounted? Is it back projected? How does that work? And when they're throwing items at the projector screen, do you worry about safety or the projector screen becoming damaged? Uh, the Anytime that we're throwing at the projector, we will use the small Voigt uh, gator balls, I call them. Uh, the projector is really the screen itself is is really thick, really sturdy. Um, it's it's mounted up on the ceiling and it's actually pretty cool. It's just got a button where it will go up and down uh, when you're using it or or if you decide not to use it for the day. So you can actually move it and get it out of the way if you would want. Um, the projector itself, 
is mounted on on my ceiling um, and it's got a cage around it uh, and it's it's wired so that where I can have my computer and uh, anything that I want to have on there I plug it right into the wall and it and it'll go right through there as long as you have the, the proper cords Nice. So it's a built-in projector. It, it is a built-in projector, yes. Um, the Daytona 500 was a big uh, question. So they asked, um, first question was, how do you hook your pit crew exercises to the cones? Uh, with scotch tape. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> There's probably better ways to do it, and I, I know people probably have um, – cone holders and sign holders and things that they put on there. But I, I just keep it simple. I laminate them and, and put it on with scotch tape. Uh, with your pedal cars, do you do a licensing program or is it get on and go? Uh, no licensing program, uh, which is kind of a cool idea. That would be put them through a little driver's test maybe. But um, we, we talk about safety. Uh, and we get on and go. Um, it's it's such a cool activity that I feel that students really want to do it. They get super excited when they come out that they will do anything and everything in their power not to be unsafe because they don't want it taken away. Um, so it's I don't, um, but now I've got ideas going through my head where where maybe I'll have to do something like that. So thanks whoever did that. And then uh, the last question was about Go Noodle, or the first question was about Go Noodle. Uh, Go Noodle is free. Um, how easy is it to sign up, and is it user friendly? I think it's 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 extremely user friendly. Um, it is free. There there is a Go Noodle Plus uh, that you do have to pay for. I believe it's thirty dollars for the year, um, and it's it's for me super user friendly where you can just go on they have videos that they put on uh weekly that classroom teachers will use as for movement in the classroom um a lot of the activities that i use from go noodle i will just type in the search bar if i'm doing an activity and see if there's anything available um or um there'll be simple activities like if i want to use yoga for a warm-up or a cool down I can type in yoga and they've got many, many videos that you can click on and choose from. So pretty, pretty cool uh, resource to have as well. All right. So I'll take this moment to ask for any last minute questions, any last minute uh, suggestions. All right. Give it a minute. And I think that wraps it up. Um, remember, participants, you can receive a certificate of participation by going to the SB Chat website and clicking the summit page. Make sure you provide the correct email address as it should be emailed to you within a few minutes. Thank you again, Jason. That was an amazing session. Lots of positive feedback. Um, remember, if you are not watching this live or you didn't catch the full thing, you can watch the session over again because it's recorded hopefully, if I did my job right. Um, we are having sessions all week long. This is just day three. Remember to check the SP Chat website, espechat.weebly.com, for details on all the other sessions. Yep, and I again, I got to thank Will uh, for being a, an awesome moderator, taking time out to, to help me with my presentation. Again, I got to thank Matt for putting this all together and giving me the opportunity to do this. Uh, I got to thank you guys for tuning in and watching on a Tuesday night about some guy from North Dakota and what he does. Um, and hopefully I was able to give you one idea, one activity uh, that you can, can add into your, to your classroom um, and make sure you guys tune in. Lots of great presentations coming up. All right, the last thing I want to say is remember there's a raffle. If you go on Flipagram, and you um, take a one and a half minute or less video of or session on how um, how we did as SP Chat and the Phys Ed Summit was and ways that they can improve. You will be entered into win a year subscription to Flipagram. Remember, just use the code P2J11JO. 
All right. Thank you again for a great evening. Thank you again, Jason. Thanks, See Will. You.